Welcome to the Dallas Tigers Network. We're broadcasting live from Stephen F. Austin's field in Nacogdoches, Texas. Dallas Tigers versus the uh, Buzz Baseball Academy. Roster of about 20. They'll be playing half of them today. Your starting lineup today, Kevin, excuse me, Austin <laughs> Sanford on the mound today. Cole Solomon, his battery mate, behind the dish. You got Rylan King at first base. Jake Carter at second base. You got, who is that? Chaz Peterson playing shortstop. And Jake Carter at third base. No, uh, Landon Longsworth. Right? Second third. base. Oh, no, they did. They flip flopped him. Our lineup says Landon's going to be starting at second base, but he's clearly the. Hard throwing number five over there at third base right now. Jake Carter at second base. In right field, you have Connor Lynch holding down the normal spot. Center fielder Ty Manning. And the big cat, the do it all, play everywhere, Tate True Blood in left field today. We're up in the uh, press box today, air conditioning. It's a rough life, but someone's got to live it. You might not hear the normal. Uh, cackling of the, the fans as they hear our attempts at quips. Tigers sporting their uh, Saturday whites. We've got the camouflage look by Buzz Baseball Academy. And blue in the powder blue. And leading off for Buzz Baseball is the shortstop, Leighton Wolver. Awesome. Let's strike one. Little tapper back to the hill. Sanford all over at a low throw that cannot be dug out by Ryland King. That was a tough one there. He threw it way to his uh, right. And Ryland tried to backhand it. Just couldn't make the scoop. I'm going to have to score that as an E1. Fairly routine play there, unfortunately, for the Tigers not executed. This brings up Tristan Gonzalez, the center fielder. On the outer half of the plate for strike one. A little different strike zone than we saw yesterday. Pitchers are going to like the fact that they can get that down and out pitch today. A little flare into left field. It's down the line. Just, oh, he's calling it fair. It looked foul from here, but just fair. Must have been on the line there, Brian. It does. It looks like it landed right on the line from here. Blues certainly got a great view of it and didn't hesitate. Looked like the big cat thought it was going to be foul as well. Just couldn't quite range over there. Two on, nobody out. Early trouble for the Tigers. Springs up third bat, third baseman Wade Sivis. Austin, another flare. This one down the other line, but this one does drift foul. So that uh, just ends up being a very long strike there for Austin Sanford. Certainly hadn't made good contact yet, but the Tigers and Sanford in early trouble here. Nobody, on, nobody out, two men on. Hey, 
Sanford, the 0-1 pitch on the outer half, a good pitch. Gets ahead 0-2 now as that one's just fouled off the plate. Strikeout goes an awful long way here for Sanford. See if he can get to chase one. Inside move for Sanford, checking the runner back. Just dancing around a little bit, catching his eye. Really got to make him hit your pitch right here. And he does. Curveball right down there. Should be two. And is. Nice turn by Carter there. Chaz comes up with the play at shortstop. Nice little underhand move to Carter, and Carter's in perfect position to make the turn. Rylan King holds the bag. A lot better position now with two outs and a man on third than we were a few minutes ago. This brings up the cleanup hitter, Will Carpenter. He's an extra hitter today, number four. Big man. Starts him off with a curve, a big swing and a mess. Ahead again, ahead of all four batters as Austin's pouring in the strikes. Almost got him to go on that one as well. Inside, moving around. Looks good, though. Looks like he's really hitting his spots as Cole set up a little bit on the inside part of the plate there. 2-1 count, though. A little tight there. Just didn't quite get the bite on his curveball there he's looking for. I think Sanford's probably thinking better to walk this guy than it is to give him a meatball and let that runner be played in. And misses out on the fastball. Big boy, that uh, cleanup hitter there. No doubt about it. They did not just add any speed on the bases. Uh, batting fifth for them, the first baseman, Zach Mazza. Listed at 6'2", 220 in their program. And a high chopper, bobbled initially, thrown off the back foot, and gets the out. Great job there to stay with the ball. Jake Carter, tough one, backed him up a little bit. Not his traditional position at second base. But he kept it down, made the throw over to Ryland to get him out of the inning. No runs on two hits. One hit. And an one error. hit and one error. We'll be back with the bottom of the inning. Welcome back, Tigers fan. Bottom of the first inning. Buzz baseball versus the Dallas Tigers. No score. Leadoff hitter, center fielder, Ty Manning, number two. This is right-handed pitcher Dalton Blake, six foot one eighty-five. Pitcher. Graduated just a few months ago. It's no two count to Ty Manning. Start him off with a curveball that caught the outside corner. Second pitch definitely brought the heat. And is a commit to Panola Junior College. Tried to get him to chase on an outside pitch. One ball, two strikes. That evens the count at 2 2. Smart pitches there, but smarter batting. Curveball that he started over the middle of the plate broke hard into the left handed box. Brings the count full. Ty Manning, a little bit ahead of that one, pulls it just a 
left of the third baseman for a foul ball. Extend the at-bat. And once again, doing his job at leadoff, uh, going to see the seventh pitch already in the inning. Fouls off the seventh pitch. And not only have we seen the seventh pitch, we think we've seen everything this guy's got. He's thrown several fastballs, curveball slash slider, and uh, I think the changeup was the one on the sixth pitch that he was just a little bit ahead. High fastball, draws four, and not surprisingly, Manning does what he does. Just gets on. Eight-pitch walk, and uh, you can... You can be sure that he will recap it now once on the base. He'll definitely have that pitcher's attention. Pete Hamrick up to bat in an EH slot, number nine. We expect to see Pete enter the game possibly later in a relief role as a pitcher. Pretty short lead for Manning, not going, and it's Left hit. Left a curveball up there. Deep in the air, it looks like it's going to be played, and it is about 350 feet there, but uh, a long out. Yeah, he hung a curveball there. Definitely a mistake pitch that Hamrick did not miss on, but just a lot of grass out there, easily covered. Brings up number four, the catcher Cole Solomon. Batting from the left side of the dish as a right-handed pitcher. Starts him off off speed on the outside. Doesn't get the bend he was looking for. 1-0 and to Solomon. Manning finally goes, and Cole rips it just foul, just wide of first base. I don't know if that was a hit-and-run situation, but Manning had the base. Usually a matter of when, not if, uh, on the Manning moving. And uh, with Solo, who handles the bat well, it's a good time anytime. Quick move over to the bag by the pitcher. Manning's back pretty easily. Diving in head first. Extends his lead enough that draws another pickoff move. He's definitely stretched at the last few pitches here. Not going in. Solomon wears one. Looked like a slider that just... Uh, Broke right into his front front leg. Easy base. I know we and say it all the time. You can't help but give a little bit of credit to Ty Manning. Causes the pitcher to throw over to him twice. He extends his lead just a little bit more. Pitcher's kind of looking out of the corner of his eye. Ball goes where you look. And here a left-handed hitter, hitter gets hit in the left leg. Right leg, excuse me. Cleanup hitter Ryland King steps to the plate. Brenton McMahon in uh, courtesy running for Solomon. Big high leg kick and misses outside. That's inviting Manning to take third if, uh, if we see that leg kick multiple times. He's not just kicking it high. He's holding it up top. 2-0 and the count. Shortstop playing pretty tight to the bag, holding Manning close. But uh, that's about all the uh, space that Ty needs. We've gone 3-0 now, though. You won't see anything here. I think everybody's going to just watch this pitch. And right down the heart of the plate for strike one. So Ryland King at the dish. He'll be looking for a fastball here. Yeah, 
chokes and all over. Another uh, long fly ball, and Ty quickly tagging. Throw coming into third, and he's there. And the call was made. He got as good a jump on that ball as you could possibly get. Great throw by the center fielder, though. No cutoff. Straight to the bag. Just high enough for Ty Manning to come in head first underneath it. Very close play there, and Ty did get just the right timing on that tag up no back at second it. base. So we got runners at the corners, two outs. Brent McMahon forced to hold at first base there on the throw, not knowing whether the cutoff man was going to get it or not. Jake Carter at the plate. Catcher makes a nice move to the right Landed. to uh, pick him up. Oh, correction, Landon Longsworth at the plate. Chaz Peterson on deck. Early in the game, would not be surprised to see Banks in, uh, try something with first and third here. Crafty, speedy player on third base. Smart runner at first base. Might hold a pretty long lead here afterwards, secondary. Trying to get the catcher to throw to first base. And we're in the count that uh, that might happen, one and two. Landon, who's been swinging well, hasn't uh, been necessarily productive, but hit a lot of hard drives down the third baseline yesterday. And that's out, and a little toss over to third, tie back. Again, once again, just drawing throws, drawing action. Keeping everyone's attention. It's hard to throw strikes, play defense when you're constantly worrying about one runner. Two and two's a count. McMahon running. Longsworth hits one. McMahon confused and it's fielded in shallow left to retire the side. Three fly balls for the Tigers, retire the side, leaving two men on. There was no base hits, a walk and a hit batter. And that's the end of one complete, no score here in Nacogdoches. No defensive changes for the Tigers in the top of the second. Austin Sanford back on the hill, ready to work. Fouled off the back screen for strike one. Austin draws another foul. I just don't, I don't know, he hasn't thrown too many balls. He's just pouring it in the zone right now, think, ahead of this one, 0-2. I think the only balls he threw was to the one he walked uh, when he was being careful with the uh, cleanup hitter. This is the pitcher. Dalton Blake. The bat. And a purpose pitch miss high uh, for ball one, one and two. Curveball just chopped, and it could be trouble, and is. Oh. Just kind of poked it down the line. Ryland, who got there, just uh, kind of went off the heel of his glove and into right field for a leadoff single. Yeah, I think Ryland covered more ground than he thought he was going to there. Got got to the ball in time, but uh, instead of getting it into webbing, got it off the heel of the glove, kicked it back into fair territory. He might have thought it was going to be called foul, but uh, it was right over the bag. Good call by Blue. <laughs> Tough play there. We're, we're going to score that a hit. Definitely. Yeah, it might be a tough dilemma in the seventh inning of a no-hitter, but I think that's clearly a hit. We have a courtesy runner out there. Austin now out of the stretch. Another first pitch strike. Fouled off down the left field line and out of play. That was the fake sacrifice bunt slash play by the uh, left-handed batter. Tiger, Tigers not fooled, though. Did not come charging. Squares the bunt this time, and it's a nice one. Cole Solomon calls him off, makes the throw down to first, but the sacrifice is effective, and a runner now in scoring position with one out. Good pop by uh, Solo, who calmly 
called everybody off and made a nice strong throw to first base. It was obviously an effective sack bunt, but not really the sack bunt you want. He only put it about four feet in front of the plate. Kind of died right there. This is left fielder Rhett Rosenose, 6'4", 180. That plate in the eight hole position here. Missing inside there for ball one. Austin with the throw, wheels around. It's a good move there. Had him fooled. Unfortunately, the throw was just a little high and out. So uh, Peterson couldn't get the tag down before the runner got back. One ball to count. Hits that spot that's very pitcher friendly right now with that low outside corner that they're giving him. Or was that the first pitch? Scoreboard has 0-1. We'll double check that with the book. Misses outside on that one, but it is a nice pitch as you heard. Two and one. Fan declare. We did have it right. Two and one is the count. So says Blue. Another pickoff attempt, another wide throw toward the first baseline. Had, had his lead stretched out but was ready to scamper back. Wasn't really leaning at all. It's really what it takes to get, uh, to get that runner at second. And a good throw. Sanford in tight. Running the count three and one now. Outfield not giving a whole lot of respect to the bottom of the order here. Right field and center field both playing pretty shallow. It's not uncommon for our center fielder who has some significant range. He liked it, but uh, and leaned over and had another second look, if you will, but uh, ends up calling it just wide and gives awards the base. That's going to bring another mound visit, but uh, I have to agree with you. I think he was thinking really hard about calling that a strike. Again, pitching into a little bit of trouble, first and second, one out for the second consecutive inning. It's going to bring up the number nine hitter, the catcher. Keller Southard, 6-2-205. Big team this that we're, we're facing here today. It wasn't hard to tell at warm-ups uh, that this was going to be a team that had some power. Going gloveless at the plate today. Don't see very many batters these days not wearing gloves. And that one's in the dirt. Going to move the base runners up 90 feet and put them both in scoring position with just one out. A different situation altogether now. I think that one fooled Solomon a little bit. Uh, obviously it was shorter than Sanford intended, but uh, Solomon got over to the right to block. It had the chest high, but it took a real high bounce all the way back to the net. No chance to hold the runners there. In on the corners is the offensive or defensive alignment. We have a foul back out of play to even the count at one ball and one strike. Pretty pitch there. Came in on him. Aggressive swing, but right off the handle. Ground ball up the middle. Tigers look like they're willing to concede the run. But he gets the swing and a miss. Ahead in the count now, one and two. That was a very defensive looking swing. Yeah. 
Sanford reaches back and pegs him right in the left shoulder. Not the pitch you're looking for on a 1-2 count. That fastball really got away from him riding up and in. Loads of bases. And bring another courtesy runner on. So bases loaded, one out. Stay up on the corners. Now more of a double play depth situation. Although we this do is, look like we might have some speed at the plate. And this is second baseman Corbin Hall at the plate. Batting 10 in the lineup. It's the first player we've seen in a while under six foot. Aggressive swing, but fouled off as Sanford starts him out with a hard fastball. Although he's listed 5'11", but just weighing a buck 45. <laughs> he may be the uh, the shortest 5'11 I've seen, too. <laughs> That's a program height for you. Nice block by Cole Solomon there, confidently allowing it off the chest protector, squirt a few feet in front of home plate while keeping his eye on the runner at third. We got a ball and a strike, bases full, one out, top of the second. A throw over to first and it's going to be into and out of play. That's going to score one. And move the runners to second and third. I don't know whether Ryland King was surprised by that or not. That's a pretty typical Dallas Tigers move with bases loaded and everyone really paying attention to the runner at third. Sanford wheels and throws to first. Was a little high and to uh, Ryland's left, but really did not look like he was ready for it. And might have just been uh, situational because the first base, the guy on first did not look like he had a large lead. It was not uh, the typical situation. So maybe just some miscommunication there all the way around. It's going to cost the Tigers a run. And uh, keep two people in scoring position. Unlike uh, last time when we had a runner at second and third with one out, the entire infield's in this time. So. Although we've already conceded one run, we don't want to concede another one. So we've got the infield up, and we're going to be making the play at home. Two and one now is the count. Sanford working out of the stretch. And this one's drilled to right field and deep. It's, uh, Connor Lynch makes a beautiful snag. And a double, a double play. play. No run scores. Not sure what the runner at second was thinking there. I was just going to comment that he wasn't getting much of a lead considering the, uh, the infield was up. And uh, he clearly was not aware of the situation and took off running even though uh, the ball was caught. Never it, turned to look and go back. It looked like it might get over Connor, but uh, last minute reached up and made a nice grab, but no excuse there for that base runner. Yeah, I mean, uh, let's face it, if, if it gets over Connor, he could walk home from there. He doesn't need to uh, be getting any kind of jump. So... But the Tigers benefit from it. We get the uh, bottom of the second coming up with the Tigers down one nothing, and uh, we'll be back in a moment. So the last half inning ends on a double play, but uh, for those of you who scored in the book, that's not a force play at second when the the uh, runner is doubled up because he left the bag early. So the run would have scored coming in from third had he plated before the play was made. The out was recorded before the run came in, so the run, score stays 1-0. Good piece of hitting by Chaz Peterson there. Pulls one past the third baseman for a single. Lead off, now on first base. That brings up Jacob Carter. One on, nobody out in the bottom of the second as the Tigers try to answer. A big swing and a miss. Just uh, just missed that. Looked like he had it. The timing, anyway. Just 
Chaz Peterson, a short lead at first. A throw over, and he's back easily in time, diving chest on the middle of the bag. Jacob down in the count, 0-1. Oh Looked like a hit and run. Easily makes the steal, uh, swing and a miss at the plate. So Carter's going to be down 0-2, but Peterson now in scoring position with nobody out. Carter, a very different job now to get the ball, move the runner over. A swing and a miss and tagged out at home plate. Not what we were looking for there, but uh, Chaz Peterson stands at second with one out. Connor Lynch now to the plate. That ball goes wheels and throws and goes to center field. Chaz quickly moves on to third base. Wasn't a terrible throw, uh, but just kind of all base runner, run, uh, shortstop, ball all coming together and gets away and uh, gets away cleanly all the way to center field. Peterson easily taking third base. So Connor Lynch now can uh, do the work, do a job. Get this game back knotted up. 1 0 the count. So we just got the confirmation from Blue in the official scorebook. Blue did uh, keep an eye on that runner coming in from third base at the last half inning. And he did not get to the plate before the out was recorded at second base, so we still won nothing. It's a chopper, but it's a uh, pitcher bare hands it and throws it in the dupe. A good scoop down there at first base. Definitely picked up his pitcher there because the pitcher could have easily put that ball in the right field. But, uh, a big target down there. He did a great job of first protecting, blocking it, but uh, gloving it as well. Nice play down there. It's going to bring up Tate Trueblood now, two down. The big cat needs to find some grass somewhere. We got the rare pick to third move there. You won't find too many college coaches that are a fan of that. Tate takes ball one, high and in. Need a clutch hit here to tie the ball game up. Get that runner on and then have two outs that are not productive. It's a tough situation. Two and out. Clutch. Tate Trueblood now looking zoning in, looking dead red right here, 2 0. He gets a fastball, it's a little out. 3 0 is the count. Yeah, I imagine Banks is going to take the bat out of his hands on this pitch. We're going to see if the uh, pitcher can crawl his way back. And misses four straight. Easily takes the bag there, bringing up Brandon Ernest. Ernest is a good hitter and a great contact hitter. Not necessarily uh, the guy we were hoping for in this situation uh, from a contact standpoint since a uh, he were up with that one out, I can guarantee we'd have had to run in. He's going to put the ball in play. He takes a strike. He tends to take things deep in the count and doesn't disappoint here. 0-1. High and outside for ball one, one and one count. True Blood looks to be uh, trying to get a little attention from the catcher. Again, would not be surprised to see uh, some sort of first and third situation with a savvy base runner at third base and Chaz Peterson at pretty good speed.
Two balls, one strike to Brandon Ernest. He'll be looking for a fastball here. Be nice to see that opposite field shot right over the second baseman. He's going to get that call. Ernest showing his dis displeasure there, but that ball went right down, uh, right on the outside and has been called a strike here early in the game. Counts even at two and two. True blood goes, and Ernest pokes it. Looks like it could be a hit, a good play, ranging over, and oh, not, not on the back. back. Not on the back. And that's going to tie the game at one. A lot going on there with True Blood breaking on the pitch. First baseman kind of got out into no man's land there. Yeah, I'm not sure what he was doing there because he uh, he followed True Blood for too many steps. Obviously, he should have been playing in his defensive role. Should have easily been able to get to the bag. And the second baseman who was covering the bag, only reason he gets to the ball is he's covering the bag for the steal attempt. But uh, yeah. Yeah, made a nice minutes. play on it, throw over. How are we going to rule that? Well, I think it's going to end up being a base hit because there's no mistake made other than a mental error and you just can't score a mental error. So an RBI single there on a poked curveball looked like Ernest doing his job, poking it in there, tying the game up. That's going to turn the lineup over and bring up our leadoff hitter, Ty Manning. Got a really quick bat. He's really been hitting it hard to the left side. I think that left fielder's in trouble here. Yeah, this pitcher makes a mistake on the inside. We're going to see an extra base attempt uh, toward the Ford sign down the left field. He's kind of shaded over toward left center, and uh, Manning has been showing a quick back. Count is even at one, one ball and one strike. Two men on for the Tigers. Takes the ball low. Two and one. You just don't see Ty Manning swinging a ball very often. You got uh, the shortstop really covering second base. There's a lot of grass over on the left side. Nice curve ball there for a strike. Two balls, two strikes, two outs, two men on. Number two at the plate. Oh, and he gets the call strike three there. A breaking ball over the outer half. Tough pitch to take, tough pitch to swing at. Nice pitch. So that ends the inning. There were two hits, two men left, but the Tigers respond and tie the game. We're one all through two innings. So the Tigers are back out in the field for the top of the third with Austin Sanford towing the rubber. One defensive change at first base. Brandon Ernest in for Ryland King. Sanford misses with the first pitch. It's ball one. Ground ball out to Jake Carter. Scoops and delivers. Nice easy play to start the inning. Getting us one out. Brings up the uh, leadoff hitter, number 44, Leighton Wolver. Commit to Navarra Junior College. Tries to lay down a bunt, pops it all the way to the back screen. Cole Solomon popping there. Didn't get much movement out of Landon Longford there. Not a lot of uh, respect on the bunt attempt there. He did show some speed in the first inning. On the uh, error by Sanford, at the, just off the bouncing off the mound, flares one off to the right. Kind of got Second jammed strike. on a breaking ball there. About all he could do with that, and now down in the count, zero and two. See what Sanford does now that he's gone through the lineup once and he's got a no two count on the man. Tried to get him to bite on a low curve ball. 
One ball, two strikes. A good breaking ball. Barely gets a piece there. Still a one two count. We missed low. We're one and two. Sanford working a little slower than normal. I'd like to see him pick the pace up a bit, as I would expect the infield would as well. All right. A little brief talk there. Maybe changing up something. Something Cole picked up on and gets the called strike three. A beautiful fastball in the lower part of the zone. And that puts two on, two down for the uh, buzz baseball. And batter clearly thought that that was a ball low, but we've been getting those low pitches called today. Hard to resist that one right down the heart of the plate like that. For the umpire. At least try and spoil that. Big Cat's going to have to get back on this one. That one's ripped. One hops into the wall. Cat comes up throwing, hits the cutoff man, and stops him at two. But he turned on that one, no doubt. A two out double. Here in the top of the third. And Sanford now again facing a runner in scoring position. Right back to work. Looked like he might have just left a change up in the top of the zone there. And batter did not hesitate. That was well hit ball. 320 to the fence. That ball hit just short of the warning track. Bounced and almost got over the fence. Hitting the wall just below the yellow line. Starts off with the curveball missing just low. This is Wade Sivis, the third baseman. Batting number three in the lineup for Buzz Baseball. Changed up his look over to second base, but through still went with a slider, catches the outside corner, evens the count at one ball, one strike. Buzz Baseball's had a runner at second in all three innings here. It's the most benign situation, but we can't make any guarantees. We had a balk of some kind. Called by home plate umpire. Didn't see exactly what that was, but... Uh, there was no hesitation. No argument by anybody, but uh, I didn't see it either. It looked like he stepped back to step off the rubber, but evidently not. Sanford's going from the windup at this point. I'm still looking to get out of this inning without giving up the run. Third straight breaking ball on the three hitter, and now ahead in the count, one ball and two strikes. And. Rounds it out, another breaking ball, swing and a miss, and that retires the side. So Gonzalez, second hit, hit of the day, does no damage. Tigers going to the bottom of the third inning, having gotten out of the inning, leaving a runner stranded at third base. One to one, we'll be right back. All right, leading off the bottom of the third, Pete Hamrick, who hit a deep fly ball, about 350 feet, but too much towards straightaway center last time up. Swing him first, first pitch. pitch again. And a little chopper, easily handled uh, or mishandled, but uh, scooped up by the first baseman and tossed over to the pitcher for a one pitch out. You got to like first baseman who is not afraid at all to get his body in front of the ball. He ate that up right in the middle of the chest, kept the ball in front of him, and just makes the toss to the pitcher who's covering the bag. He's listed 6'3", 250. He didn't feel the ball hit him. Cole Solomon up. He was hit by a pitch last time up. Takes a ball outside ahead of the count. 1-0. and Way ahead of that pitch. Pulls in it foul. Right at first base. 
Even to count of one. Two and one, now the count. Another miss, missed it just outside. You hear the coach? Just left a voice note for kid. I, uh, getting some for tape. Awesome, Did you see my text you. message? You didn't get it yet? Did you bring a camera? No. And Cole walks uh, with one out here in the... Uh, Top of the third inning. Cole Solomon, uh, two plate appearances, but they won't go in your book that way. Hit by pitch and a walk. Brings up Ryland King, one out. Dallas Tigers tied with Buzz Baseball, one to one in the bottom of the third. So, Bretton McMahon in as a courtesy runner at first base and or substitution, depending upon the agreement the coaches have at this point. I'm sure it's a courtesy runner for Cole Solomon, the catcher. High ball closer to the helmet than the strike zone of Ryland King. Two balls, one strike. Throw over to first base. Bretton McMahon is in down and dirty. Outside pitch for ball three. Correction, ball two. And that goes in for a strike. Three and one now the count. Chopper just foul. We're going to get a confirmation here, hopefully from Blue. The scoreboard's changed several times on this one. Looks like a 2-2 two -two count. I had it as a 2-1, and then they called the strike. Foul just an extra pass. Ball but, <laughs> but it is, uh, Ryland thinks it's ball four and uh, jogs down to first base. Well, evidently Blue has a very small third finger. So it sure looked like he had two in the left hand and two in the right on that call. So with two walks in the inning, creating a little problem for, uh, for Dalton, the Panola Junior College commit. Got two men on, one out, facing Landon Longsworth here in the bottom of the third. Landon uh, ended the first inning with a uh, shallow fly ball to left field in a similar situation with runners on. Had runners on the corners at that time. So a chance to produce again here. Takes low for ball one to start the at-bat. Way outside and to the screen, and that'll move the, the Tigers up, and those two walks are now really looming with uh, both in scoring position with just one out. Yeah, this pitcher's uh, got nobody to blame in this situation but himself. He overthrew that ball way into the uh, left, left-handed left batter's box. Catcher never had a chance. The Look infield it. comes in now. Two old count, man at second and third. In this 1-1 one, one game. Not close again, and now count runs 3-0. I don't know what we're seeing here, but he's definitely uh, missing wide right. All three pitches, not even close. Makes a correction there on the 3-0 count. 
Pours that one in. We've seen that uh, for a couple of batters now. Run 3-0 and then uh, can't get it done to, to close the batter. It's a tapper. And uh, the only play is to first. A nice play by the second best baseman hustling over. The pitcher was a little late getting there. First baseman shoveled to the second baseman. So the rare... 3-4 out at second base, but it does bring in the go-ahead run for the Tigers. Yeah, when you see a 3-4 out, uh, it's almost always something strange that happened because uh, very seldom is the first baseman going to throw to second base and have the second baseman catch the ball, let alone have him shuttle the ball over to first base. Pitcher almost had, uh, again, uh, made his own trouble by not getting over there. Second baseman covered him. Chaz Peterson, who led off the second inning with a ringing single to left field, now up with a man on third, two outs. Takes the first pitch, a high curve ball that misses, 1-0 count. Misses outside again with that fastball that he just cannot seem to find the zone on, 2-0 count. And once again, running the count 3-0. We've seen it, uh, I think this is the fourth batter we've had at 3-0. And last at bat, Longsworth uh, so focused, I think, on getting a job done that he, he was bound and determined to get that ground ball to the right side of the infield. Probably swung at a ball four as well. So Peterson gets the uh, obligatory strike, uh, take it to a 3-1 count. We'll see if he can show a little more discipline and make sure he's got a pitch he can hit. And again, it's down, and he puts the runners at the corners with the third walk of the inning. And that's going to bring him out and visit. And that'll be all for Dalton. They had the pen worked up and uh, going to make the call. Really struggled finding strike zone there here in the, in the bottom of the third. Again, uh, a 2015 graduate and commit to Panola Junior College. Uh, done for the day here. In the pregame conversations, uh, they were planning on bringing Melcher in, in relief. But uh, we know that the uh, coach was planning on getting at least through three innings. Uh, so Melcher up uh, on the mound now warming up. Also a 2015 graduate. Runs 6 uh, foot 160 listed. He's at Concordia, Nebraska commit. Not sure uh, too much about that. Actually, we've got... Uh, Looks like a change. They've gone to a different person in the rotation. They're going to go ahead and bring Burns in. He was going to be the third pitcher in the game. But uh, number 15, Burns is the one who's going to be uh, warming up and taking over. Listed primarily as a second baseman. Runs 6'1", 170. Fadden throws from the right, a 2016 graduate. Buzz Baseball carries eight pitchers on this team and uh, trying to get as many of them through rotations in their four games this weekend as possible. And the warm-ups are done. We're going to have uh, Jacob Carter. He comes to bat with runners at the corners. Ryland King at third base. No speed, but we're not going to need speed this situation. Ball gets past the catcher. There's a lot of space behind home plate. Ryland will score easily. Obviously, he'll score on any single without a problem. Victim of the strikeout in the second. Certainly uh, been streaky hitter. Uh, would like to atone for that here in the bottom of the third. A nice hack, and he's really been on balls like that. Uh, really, the swing looks really good here in the recent weeks, but that one fouls back to the screen. First home run of the season a couple weeks ago, grand slam in game situation. It's gone opposite field the last few uh, uh, singles for his bats as well. Really doing a good job of taking what the pitcher gives him. 
This is a high chopper to the first baseman who will take it to the bag himself to retire the side. But the Tigers uh, jump on him for a one on no hits. There was two men left. And the Tigers lead 2-1 after three full. We'll be right back. Sanford, who was uh, pouring in strikes, uh, now working behind hitters, had, hadn't had too many first pitch strikes of late, and that uh, starts off ball one to the cleanup hitter. So defensively, we uh, have a, just a couple of changes. Matt Natola in at second base, and Rylan King back in uh, the lineup at first base. Pops uh, this one up. A high fly, and Ty Manning circles under it and makes the one-handed grab in shallow left center field. Any number of people could have caught that one. A really towering shot by the first baseman. Brings up number 13. Again, ball one from Sanford. So we must have had a, a lineup change here. Number 13 batting in the spot that uh, Maza was batting in in the previous inning. Maza number 43. Uh, must have been substituted in for. And that's also a high fly ball. This to the right side. Easy uh, play for Connor Lynch who makes a two-handed grab out there in right field for the second out of the inning. And although working behind both, uh, we're just five pitches in this inning. This will bring back up the uh, starting pitcher, number 34, Blake. Dalton Blake. Blake is the uh, lone run for Buzz Baseball, scoring on the air and by again, Sanford. Once again, ball low and starts behind 1-0. That one fouled from just out of play, down the right field line and over the fence. And evening, evening the count at one ball and one strike. So evidently, uh, Mazza's camouflage jersey uh, does not have his normal number six on it. That's his number 43, and so that was him in there. This is going to find the gap, although Manning was running on it big time. He's going to turn and throw. Chance to get him at second. Throws just a split second late. I think Blake was surprised to see that ball come in that quickly because he didn't slide or anything. Peterson having a little fun with him, tagging him a few times with the ball. So his second hit of the game, like this, uh, a double to the right center gap. I wouldn't say that ball was crushed, but it just was working away. It was a base hit all the way and found the gap a little bit. Manning, who got his usual great jump, just couldn't flag it down. Two outs in the inning, and again, a base runner. They've had base runners all four innings and all in scoring position. This one lined back to Sanford, who flares it out of defense to retire the side. Yeah, that uh, definitely was a save-your-life catch, uh, not, a, not a baseball play. We'll be right back. Connor Lynch leads off the bottom of the fourth for the Tigers. Burns back on the mound for Buzz Baseball. Who finds a fastball right down the outer half for strike one. Lynch, True Blood, Ernest due up here in the bottom of the fourth. That one just a little wider and not going to go for it. Blue kind of gave a little peek, but uh, certainly outside to even the count. Waits on the curveball, but does not get it silent. 
they run together down the first baseline and before the flip, easily retiring Connor Lynch. The final line on Blake, 68 pitches, 32 of them for strikes. Got through uh, two and two-thirds of an inning. Gave up two hits and two runs. He's on the uh, books right now for the loss. One earned run, five walks, and two strikeouts. Tate Trueblood up, who walked his first time up in the middle of that uh, scoring inning, the second inning. Takes a curveball for a strike on the inner half. That's a juicy curveball, too. And, uh, obviously, not swinging on that all the time on the first pitch, but that uh, got to be 20 miles an hour slower in his fastball. And he wanted to prove it there, trying to pump that fastball up right there. Yeah, that one might have been 21 miles an hour faster than this curveball. Yeah, nowhere close to the strike zone. So it's a 1 1 count to Tate True Bud. He tries the curveball again, just uh, stepped True Blood back, but uh, did not bend in. So True Blood's seen seven pitches in this ballgame, hasn't swung the bag yet. Make it eight. The only and one, not plus. Uh, only one in the zone was that uh, first, first pitch curveball that you won't see too many batters bite on. So it's a 3 1 count. He'll be looking for nothing but a juicy pitch here. Oh, a little flinch by Blue there. Yeah, I wasn't, uh, wasn't sure whether he was going to make the call or not. And, uh, <laughs> I think uh, True Blood was willing to let that strike go being on the outside corner. It's certainly been uh, called, or at least close to that's been called a strike today. We might want to check the replay on that uh, <laughs> flinch by by Blue there, but a uh, ball four for uh, Tate's second walk brings up Brandon Ernest. And there he goes, throwing another one to the screen. True Blood gets uh, down to second base out of the sprinter's pose. Really didn't give his catcher a chance to do anything special there. That ball is just ripping out of his hand, down and low and out. Ernest, who had the uh, poke RBI single in the second inning, now up with the runner in scoring position here in the fourth. He's going to have to have a better hit to score Tate on this one. I think uh, if that ball gets uh, through the middle like it would have had Tate not been going, it, uh, without a third base coach, Tate will be likely to hold it third. It's 2-0. We're hoping he's looking for something magic. He and turned he turned on it. A big swing and a hack back over the screen. Looked like a breaking ball he tried to get on. He wasn't going to let that one go by. Banks and hustles over to the third base coach's box. Here mid-inning. Not like he has a runner in scoring position or anything. Two and one is the count. Boy, that looks a lot like the same place that ball four was called on Tate Trueblood. Two and two now the count. That looked tying away, but a uh, strike nonetheless. Evening the count. It's going to have to be aggressive here. Got to at least have a productive in bat. And he is. Jumps on that one. Spoils a pitch that's pretty good, not real good for driving. Puts it back up over the box, backstop. Looks down, gets a few uh, coaching texts on that swing. Takes a ball high in the zone. Filling the count 3-2. Shortstop holding the runner here. Really opened up the gap between shortstop and third. I'd like to see Brandon pull one here. It's a chopper up the middle. That's going to move the runner over. But uh, as Brian was saying, the shortstop was shaded over that way, so it was a very easy play for him. Scoops and delivers the out. That's going to roll the lineup over. Going to need a clutch single out of Ty Manning with two outs now, and Tate Trueblood standing at third base. This insurance run, very important going into the uh, fifth inning. Be nice to have a two run lead. The Tigers have stranded six runners in uh, just those first three innings. A uh, little unusual for this team who, who has a lot of productivity at the, at the plate. Tate now in third. Really like to see him get in here. 
It wouldn't be the first wild pitch of the inning if he hits, if he gets one. And you can bet Trubot will be looking forward to score on it. 2-0 the count to Manning. It's going to take a good pitch to get him swinging. And that's not one. It's outside. Throw back to third. True Blood's able to get in standing up. Bankston, uh, based on body language, maybe thought he should have gone in down. We're 3 0 again. Tie with a, with a walk and a strikeout today. Third time up. Watch his one go right down the middle. He wants to see that one again, I can assure you. So it's a 3 1 count. And he's hacking, pop up down the first base line, and retired. First baseman has ended quite a few innings for them. Tigers leave their seventh runner on base. We're through with four. We'll be back with the top of the fifth. Tigers leading two to one. The crowd moving consistently further and further left. And it's not coincidence. Sun. Uh, Peeking in under the shade structure here on the uh, western end, pushing uh, more and more of their Tiger fans onto the Buzz baseball side of the field. So I got a few defensive changes, most notably the left-hander now on the mound, towing the rubber, Pete Hamrick. In the infield, first baseman Connor Lynch takes over duties there. Outfield sees changes on both corners with Pearson Monroe in right field and Brenton McMahon taking left field duties. Rest of your lineup's the same. Matt Atoll at second base, Chaz Peterson, shortstop, Landon Longsworth at third, Ty Manning in center field, and Cole Solomon behind the plate. We'll have the numbers on uh, Austin Sanford here in a moment as his day is complete. Looks like he is set up for the win if the Tigers can hold this on, hold the lead, and hold, finish this game out. Pete Hamrick starts him off with a, with a uh, off speed for strike one. So Sanford had a great outing, uh, four complete innings, four hits, gives up only one run on two walks and two strikeouts, 54 pitches, so very efficient getting through uh, four innings. Anytime you're right around 13 pitches an inning, that's what you look for. Of course, a couple couple double plays doesn't hurt you. Pete evens the count there with a fastball down the middle, two and two. Gets a foul ball down the line. Connor is moving to do it, but the uh, ball's out of play. This is a uh, pinch hitter, Brooks Embry, listed as a shortstop Outfielder, 5'11", 180. He's a 2017 graduate. So relatively young for this team we're facing. Full count for the batter. Two, two, now full. Pete's first batter, he's run the count full. Usually showing great command and does here. Makes him hit it. It's in the infield. And it's not going to be made. A lot of hesitation. Looked like a lot of players lost that ball in the sun. Connor Lynch called everybody off. Uh, first baseman. And I think he just uh, thought the ball was coming a lot closer to him. Ends up on the uh, third base side of the pitching mound. And he just could not get there. That's a ball you want to see your shortstop be a lot more aggressive with, but as Peterson's coming in, he's looking into the sun, and he's hearing Connor Lynch call him off. Tough, uh, but uh, Cameron out there nearly on the baseline talking to a shortstop there. Got to take command there, I believe. Yeah. So Pete goes to work with a man on, nobody out. I don't know how we're going to score that. I guess that's a hit too, right? 
Yeah, it, you don't have to touch the ball for it to be a hit. Um, but when you get a play like that, oftentimes you will see it scored as a hit. Just uh, almost, if it's an error, it should be on the entire infield there. <laughs> Official book scores it as a single, and again, there's not much else you can do on that. Hambert gets a foul ball over the screen for strike two. 0-2 is the count. We're looking for the infield to bail him out here and get uh, erase that runner, turn in a double play. Pete, ahead of the count, certainly wants to make him hit his pitch here. And does. Has him leaning way over the plate. Another foul ball. This one, Lynch does make the play on. Had it all the way. Made the call and the catch. She definitely saw a little more aggressiveness there. Uh, even uh, Pete uh, moving toward to take the ball. Matt Natola coming in second base to take the ball if necessary. Once Connor clearly called everybody off, Pete goes and covers first. So we've got our first out of the inning. Holds the runner at first base. This is Corbin Hall, who lined out to uh, right field in that uh, second inning for the double play. The, the eventual double play that uh, got the Tigers out of the inning in that uh, second inning. Starts him off with a strike. Yeah, you can guarantee there was a talking to of that runner who started out at second base. Uh, is that... Uh could end up being a game changer. We have a ground ball to Peterson's right, who flips to second, a turn, and he gets it. They do great erase the runner play. and a great double play there, started by Chaz Peterson, so he tones for maybe the mental error at the start of the game, and Cameron Bankston out there to grad congratulate the infield on uh, making a great play. The total put some mustard on that. Uh, you could see his pitching arm in use there as he made the turn for second base. We'll be back with the bottom of the fifth and your Tigers batting with a 2-1 lead. So we'll start out the bottom of the fifth inning with pitcher v. pitcher. Pete Hamrick at the plate. Patrick Burns throwing to him. High and outside for ball one. Tigers lead 2-1, bottom of the fifth. Cole Solomon on deck. Gets the inside pitch call for strike one. One on one count. Buzz well, Baseball got their bullpen again working. Way outside on that curveball. Just uh, lost it before he got a chance on it. Two balls, one strike. Pete Hamrick back in the box. And Burns kind of escaped the last inning, was really wild throughout in uh, closing. This could high, be trouble. High pop, and it Texas is the leader. ultimate Texas leaguer right there between the left fielder, center fielder, and shortstop. As soon as the ball hit, all three of them passed it. <laughs> they That's were full uh, speed trying to get to it, but just a little flare off the end of Pete Hamrick's bat over the shortstop's head, finds grass about 30 feet into the grass. That's the third hit of the game for the Tigers, who have two runs on the board on six walks. Matt Natola, the second baseman, in to courtesy run for the pitcher. Pickoff move to first base. Natola's easily back diving. Cole Solomon drives one straight at the center fielder. Natola running back fast. The throw's coming. A lot closer than it should have been, but he is safe. Showing an arm out there in center field who made a good throw on Ty's, Ty Manning's tag up too. Challenged the runner right there. Back by a few steps. Got a pinch hitter for Ryland King. This is Brenton McMahon. Once again, the overthrowing right-hander rips the ball into the left-handed batter's box. Catcher makes a good backhanded catch on it, but it's ball one. Natola with a modest lead at first base. 
High pitch in the zone for strike one. One one's the count. McMahon's first at bat in the game. Not used to seeing that high pitch called strike. Shows bunt. Pulls it back. Very late square there, which uh, tells me we weren't thinking sacrifice. As uh, Tigers are notorious for a sacrifice bunt, we're going to square early. Swinging. Finds the gap between first and second. A total rounding second base, but thinks better of it. Hard throwing right fielder tries to get him and pick him from behind. But until he's standing on the bag. So hit number four for the Tigers. Puts runners at first and second. And brings up Landon Longsworth. Not the kind of body language you normally see from a confident pitcher. Pretty upset with himself right now. Hands on the hips, behind the mound, stretching a little bit, now telling the rubber. Probably not bunting only because it's a showcase, and that one's going to get caught by the right fielder. We made a good jump on the ball. Looked like it might fall uh, similar to Pete's in, the, in no man's land, but the right fielder made a good running catch. So two outs in the inning, both fly balls to the outfield. And that's going to bring up Chaz Peterson, one of the Tigers with the four hits, who started the second inning off with a ringing single to left field, came around and scored on the play, or scored in the inning. First pitch swinging also, and this one's popped up. Gonna run this one out there, running into each other, but the first baseman, much larger than the catcher, wins that battle and snags the ball in fair territory. Pop fly got us there, and we're out of the inning. Pete Hamrick back out onto the mound. Straight to one try. Two more runners. That brings it to nine. We'll be right back. The pitcher. Patrick Burns. Jackson. All right, so we'll go to the top of the six. Pete Hamrick on the mound again for the Tigers. Your one defensive change this inning. Jake Carter in at first base. A correction also uh, change at the first base with Ryland King back in. We got a ball low to start the inning. Beating his second inning of work. Working with the same outfield. Pearson Monroe in right. Brenton McMahon left. And the man, Ty Manning, in center field. Pitch on the lower end of the zone for call for a strike. Now evening the count one and one. Followed a ball by a ball in the dirt. Running it to two and one. So Flair looks like King's going to dive and try and make the catch, but the ball's down, no out. Great try by Ryland King. Bullpen's getting some action down there. It looks like uh, Landon Longsworth getting a few pitches in just in case. Oh, and or to keep Pete on a, uh, a tight pitching number. This one's chopped toward center field, and that's an out. Looked like an off-speed pitch that the uh, batter got a little fooled on, came in on him, and uh, just punched it out to center field. Almost anywhere in center field is an automatic out. Anything in the air like that that's going to hang any, any minute is uh, certainly going to get grabbed up by number two. So Pete Hamrick working with one out, nobody on. First pitch swing, flare, flared out, out of play, down the right field line. Into the bullpen. Mm -hmm. 
And Pete now ahead, 0-1. Might have been overthrowing just a little bit there. Brings the count to 1-1. One and one. This is low and in. Ground ball sharp over to Chaz Peterson, who throws a nice ball. Very close play at first, but gets him by a half step. And that's the second out of the inning. Ryland King's confident step off the bag, probably just enough to close the deal with the umpire. Some good wheels there. Chaz did not come in on that ball, let it come to him, but made a good, strong, accurate throw across the diamond. Pull Another ground ball. Chaz comes in on this a few steps. The same accurate throw, and that'll retire the side on about seven pitches. Pete Hamrick works fast there and gets great defense behind him. We'll go to the bottom of the six with the Tigers leading two to one. Joe Melcher. <laughs> Some new pitcher on the mound for the Buzz Baseball. Your new pitcher is Joe Melcher. Kind of brings it uh, two thirds, a little lower arm angle than we're used to seeing. Looks like it's got a good live fastball. Just took about three warm-up pitches and it said, send it down, I'm ready. Starts uh, starts him off with a uh, first pitch strike. Matt Natola at the plate. His first at bat this game. Bottom of the six, Tigers leading two to one. And we think he's uh, pinch hitting for Jake Carter. Two and one the count now. That was a uh, surprise no call there on that uh, that pitch. That's uh, one that's pretty consistently been called a strike. Matt Natola heading into the uh, dugout to uh, retrieve his batting gloves in the middle of this at bat. Banks and telling him, uh, take your time. I think that's what that yeah. sign was. <laughs> so Natola gets him laced up, picks up the bat, and he's ready to go. 2-1 the count. Got a high fastball look to jump on it, but uh, early and, and pulled it well foul. Even count two balls and two strikes. I don't know what it is about those high fastballs that are tough to lay off of, but that clearly would have been ball three. 2-2 two, two count. Comes inside with him, and the uh, movement on that sidearm is going further inside. Backs Natola out of the batter's box, bringing the count full. Gets this one down the middle and fools Natola, who's late on the swing. Strike three swinging for the first out of the inning. Brings up Connor Lynch, number eight. Connor Lynch, the source of those batting gloves that Matt Natola went looking for. Gets some dirt on his hands and goes in barehanded. We've heard from a few college coaches how effective this uh, sidearm pitch can be. Haven't heard anybody say how they like a guy always throwing sidearm, but clearly that's uh, that's the way the number nine is going to be working the entire time he's out there. 1-1 one, one count. Ball two outside. Tigers holding on to a slim 2-1 lead right here. Lynch going to change up the timing a little bit. Got something in his eyes, backs off. Umpire gives him the timeout. Hard on the ground, but to the first baseman who takes it unassisted. 
to the bag. Not going to get anything by the first baseman today. He's been a vacuum cleaner over there. And we got the first plate appearance for Pearson and Rowe coming in for Tate Trueblood. Trying to get everybody in at bat here. He had come in to play left field and watches a fastball well out of the zone for ball one. That's really been Melcher's miss this inning. That outside pitch that just does not seem to come back trailing in. He's had one or two on the inside, but most of the misses are way outside. That's what he's looking for right there. Catches the batter's eye as it's outside and then tails back in and catches the black. 1-1 one, one count. Tigers batting substitutions, keeping in mind that this should be our last at bat if we're able to get it done in the top of the seventh defensively. Count running to three and one as that one misses outside. Pearson, who likes to hack, will be looking for one. And does. And that's also to the first baseman who flips to the pitcher, covering nicely for the final put out. A three up, three down inning for Buzz Baseball, and we're off to the final inning, the seventh. The Tigers clinging to a 2 1 lead. Coach, what are you getting on his fastball? Uh, I'll let you know in just a second. Is okay. Right here? Yeah. All right, here to close the uh, seventh inning, Landon Longsworth to the mound. On the radar gun at 83, 84 miles an hour, Landon Longsworth warming up. You get the save with a 2-1 lead by the Tigers. No defensive changes other than the one on the mound. Cole Solomon stays behind the plate. Matt Natola at second base, Chaz Peterson at shortstop. Jake Carter finishes the throw around from third base. Ryan King holding down first base. Your outfield is Pearson Monroe in right, Ty Manning in center, and Brent McMahon in left field. He's a uh, 2016. And an evens account, one ball and one strike. Showing a good spark here. Hoping to close out the Tiger win. Just misses out. Ball two. Two and one now the count. And misses in. Got to go to work here. Cannot put the uh, leadoff runner on on a walk here. Bankston would be telling him to hit it, throw it right down the middle, right down Broad Street, right here. And, and does. does. That and ball's head out and over the uh, bullpen for a long strike. And that makes it full. 3 2 the count. He'd be asking for the same pitch right here. Yeah, the last thing you want to do is put a tying run on as a leadoff coming in out of the bullpen. Let this the has been work. the hottest hitter for Buzz. He's got two hits. He had a double, a single and a double. Pulling them both. And he went for a high ball four strike out of the zone. High. And is in the books with a strikeout. That's a great pitch there, but it's definitely ball four. The batter who uh, pulled two to left field, one completely over the left fielder's head, just couldn't resist trying to go for three for three. Change in movement and position. Right-handed pitcher coming in after them seeing a left-hander for a couple innings. 
really making a difference. That's a pitch most Tigers would wear. Curve ball that didn't curve. This uh, six foot four, two hundred and thirty pound batter ducks it and looks to take uh, take ball two. Count now two and one. Longsworth working quickly, but uh, hadn't quite settled into the zone. He does get a strike and a pop up, and it's going to go foul, work its way foul, evening the count at two balls and two strikes. Count goes full to the E.H., Will Carpenter, who's probably the only player on this team that's going to make that first baseman look a little small. Full count here for the second straight batter. And it's right down the middle and popped up. I'm not sure it's just on the top of the dugout. We're in the top of the seventh. Tigers up 2-1. Beautiful field here, home of Stephen F. Austin University, although off campus. Beautiful ballpark and stands. The 3-2 payoff pitch. Right down the middle again, fouled back to the screen. We're going to replay that one. Timing looked pretty good on that one. He was right on it, just missing. Yeah, he uh, he's battling in there. Landon's going to need to be careful here because he's seen a bunch of pitches, and he's got some power. He'll be looking to fool him on this one. Outfield, Tiger outfield playing shallow as well. Certainly not in the no doubles, and that one is drilled, as you predicted. And that one is off the wall in left center. Manning back there to get it. And uh, he's going to be held to two. That's a triple by most hitters. But, uh, the big man, all that power, it definitely slows him down a little bit. He's held at second base. So the tying run, standing at second with one out, brings up number 13. You know, just working behind both, both hitters and uh, having to pump fastball after fastball right down the middle. You just got a sense that that might happen right there. Yeah, and Carpenter just did a great job of spoiling every pitch that he didn't think he could drive. And, uh, Coach Bankson wants to have a few words with Langson, Langford. Just kind of remind them where they are defensively. They got one out here in the top of the seventh. You got very uh, modest wheels at second base, so it's not uh, a single is not necessarily going to bring him home. No, it'd have to be a good one. You definitely wouldn't want one up the middle because uh, you don't want to test Ty Manning's arm. The lengthy roster does not cover number 13, so we can't tell you who this is, but uh, he's up nonetheless. This may be Maza batting with uh, the camouflage uh, jersey having a different number. Certainly Maza's batting order. Spot number five in the order. Landon starts him off with a strike. And a second one down the middle, fouled back to the screen, and now ahead. No balls and two strikes. First yeah. batter to be ahead of, and uh, apparently the mound visit may have been an effective one. Yeah. Strikeout goes an awful long way to getting out of this inning right here. 
Just missing outside. A nice pitch there from Landon. He hit his spot there, no doubt about it, trying to get the batter to swing at a ball. We haven't really seen uh, his good sharping sharp hook yet. Might want to feature it here. There it is for called strike three. Throws the batter. Disagrees with the call. Strolls back to the dugout. Kind of a lazy high curve there from Landon. We're used to seeing a little sharper breaker, but that one was certainly effective. This has been Dalton Blake, the starting pitcher, and he's been a tough out. Two hits on the day. With two outs here in the seventh as the Tigers try to close this one. You notice a few red jerseys on the uh, Buzz baseball team. Those are the pitchers. Don't know if this is something that they do for scouting purposes or just to make it easier on the coach to know how many pitchers he has. But uh, all the pitchers appear to be in red jerseys while the rest are in camouflage. Comes inside with a fastball and Blake is late on that one. For strike two. And they are down to their last strike. A long look in for Landon, and there is going to be time there at the plate. Dalton not going to put up with that. Climbs back in. A little showmanship there from both sides. Longsworth now in the stretch. Deals for strike two. We had the count wrong there. It was 1-1 one, one on the count, and now 1-2. and two. Now down to their last strike. Sorry, folks. Another long look in. He's in the stretch. Well wide. Cole Solomon does good to spear that one. Want to keep uh, the big fella over there at second as a base hit is certainly not guaranteed to score him. I think Landon was hoping to have a plus five to end the game there. He just overthrew a little bit. Two and two the count, two outs, top of the seventh. And ball three. Couldn't get him to chase on that high fastball. And he is running the count full once again. Don't want to make a mistake here on a hot hitter. You've got the base open if you need it. Don't give him something he can drive in the tying run with. <laughs> Swing and a miss! And that's going to be the ball game. A 2-1 win for your Tigers uh, on just four hits. They score three. They do strand nine in the play. Defensively, they make three double plays that really helped the cause and got them out there. A nice 2-1 win here at Stephen F. Austin Ballpark. We'll see you next time. We have bonus baseball here as uh, the controversial second inning just came back to uh, to bite the Tigers. Uh, Blue changing his mind after a consultation that the run did score uh, on the double play that uh, seemingly or did end the inning. Not a forced play. Brian talked through that in the in the uh, top of the second. Uh, him indicating that the run did not score. Now it changed tune, two runs and two hits. Uh, and uh, so we're in the bottom of the seventh. He's just saying that the runners got there before the second. And now a uh, 2 1 count on Brandon Ernest as we play the bottom of the seventh with the score, caller, score tied. So missing inside. It's now 3 and 1. So clarification on blue there. They clearly said that the uh, score is two to two because the run scored on that double play. As long as the runner plates before the outs recorded at second base, the run counts. It's not a force play. Um, it's just one of those strange rules in baseball. And uh, 
He clearly was pointing at second base, but when we went and questioned the scores, they did not have the run scored. 3 1 uh, count. Ernest swinging and hits a tapper back to the shortstop for the out uh, on the tag play there at first base. And that's one out in the bottom of the seventh. Uh, turns the lineup over. We got Ty Manning. 0 for 2 on the day with a walk. The 8 pitch walk to start the game. Uh, popped out and struck out other than that. Let's see if he can get something started for the Tigers. Swing and a foul off the catcher's mask. 0 and 1. We had uh, seemingly gone down to ask for clarification in the second to, to double check. And uh, we just either miscommunicated there or uh, Blue is just having a change of heart here in the showcase tournament. I think the situation is we got the clarification from the scorers who were adamant that the run didn't count, but they misread the signals from the umpire. It was the umpire's intent that that run counted the entire time. Now missing wide, and it's uh, not quite sure of the count. 1-1, one, 2-1, one, one, not sure. Sorry, folks, a lot of controversy up here in the press box. So now the count's 3-1. and one. Ty Manning batting, bottom of the seventh, one out. We're going to consider this a little bonus baseball for us. And uh, a one-out walk by Manning. That usually spells trouble for the opposing team right there. Manning just an aggressive base runner. Good speed, but an aggressive base runner. Great instincts on the bases and really makes things happen. Pete Hamrick at the plate. Most people get confused on that force out uh, definition, but a force out is defined as when a runner no longer has the right to, or has no longer has a right to a bag and has to advance forward. Obviously, on a fly ball, he, he doesn't have to advance; therefore, it's not a force out. On the first pitch, kind of like what we talked about on the first pitch. A throw over to first base, second uh, action is a pitch to the plate, hitting the batter, first and second, one out. Brings up switch hitting Cole Solomon. Anything but an infield hit is likely to score Ty Manning. So four has got uh, the control in his hand right here. Outfield, right field especially, playing deep, so anything in front of him will score Manning for sure. High and tight. Ball one. You're going to see Solomon hits that hole between first and second an awful lot. First baseman playing behind the runner at first base. This one's driven to center field, and it's deep. Manning's going to tag at second base again, and we're going to have a throw to third. A good arm out there, but he's going to be in easily this time as it was a deep throw, or a deep shot by Solomon. So runners on the corner now with two outs. Winning run, third base. Rylan King at the plate. Need him to bring him in. I think by rule, this is going to be the last out of the game regardless. If Ryan can bring the run in, Tigers win. If not, this game will end in a tie. So Solomon hit that one a lot, probably 370 feet, but uh, just didn't get it into the uh, alley. Pretty straightaway center in a big park. We got strike one on Ryland King. Tigers really want this game right now. They're all at the top of the dugout. Swing and a miss on a high fastball. He's down in the count, 0-2. Got to be tough here. 
Pete Hamrick is going to take off to second base. Almost baited the pitcher into making a throw there, and Time Hanning would have for sure been off to the races to home plate. And that would have challenged the, uh, the umpires to be paying attention there to see whether the run comes across the plate before the tag is made, no doubt. Ryland, late on that, fouls it off, staying alive, 0-2. Pitcher came in to challenge him on that one. The Tigers with just four hits, they need a fifth to win this ball game. Melcher working from the stretch. Throws a curveball and it's away, and that's going to be a run. Ty Manning will not waste that, and that's the ball game, folks. That's your ball game, Ben. Curveball that just got away from the catcher, and that's it. You're not going to uh, fool number two down there. He's waiting at every chance and takes advantage, and the Tigers walk away with a 3-2 win. And this time it's going to be a handshake for real. We'll see you next time.